and gentlemen, my name is John Belkowitz and I'm going to talk to you today about Concrete Beams Can't Fly. Uh, that's why we named it and that's why we're doing it. So Whitney is taking a reinforced concrete class at University of North Dakota and doing an awesome job and I actually taught a reinforced concrete uh, beam class or a reinforced concrete class at uh, Stevens Institute of Technology so this class or, or this portion of the the academic career you know gets me right here and I I, I like to get involved in it um, and it goes back to when I was taking my first set of classes reinforced concrete classes I had some pretty bad professors and what I mean by that is I'm sure they were doing a great job and they were a great husband or father or, or grandfather or, or you know grandmother, mother, wife um, but that being said they, they didn't do a great job uh, teaching the concepts and that's one thing that I wanted to go over today and I remember my teachers uh, or my professors teaching me about balance uh, and the balance that is needed in all reinforced concrete structures and I actually took many a reinforced concrete uh, class because I didn't do well in it and I wanted to keep taking it. The first time I took it, I came close, I mean like percentage points of failing it. The second time I took it, I got a C plus. And then the third time I took it, I finally got an A and then I went to the advanced versions too. But that first time I took it, when my professor was talking about balance, um, and oh, I'll never forget this, he said, and if, if your reinforced concrete structure is not balanced, if your equations aren't balanced, what'll end up happening is your reinforced concrete structure is gonna fly off the page. And ah, oh, and I get it that they were making a joke. And I'm not trying to be picky here, but come on, man, I mean, that's just stupid. Like, if you're, Equations aren't balanced and nothing flies off the page. Maybe points, but your structure doesn't fly off the page. What ends up happening is if you end up using those values, things can go wrong. Structures can fail and people can die. And, and that's it, that's the reality of it. And we or I needed to hear that rather than somebody trying to be cute and witty to really understand how important it was for us to understand these general concepts that I'm going over today. And, and that's what I want to dive into. So we've got our Math Monday. Math Monday. And what we're looking at is a single reinforced concrete beam. And if you don't know how to work with this stuff, you don't know how to do the math or understand the theory behind it, two great textbooks. One by Nawi, we'll put the link in the description below. And another one by Wang et al. Big group of people. This is the one that Whitney is using right now. Great books. So we'll put the links to both of these, but it's a rudimentary diagram of a reinforced concrete beam. And we have another video that goes over assumptions, and I'm not going to go over that now, but when we look at this rudimentary schematic, we break up our concrete beam into two things. A compression zone, or C, and a tension zone, or T, where our forces of this proverbial bending beam need to be balanced in both of these zones. And in the top zone, our compression zone is comprised of what the concrete can do. We know concrete does well in compression. And at the top of our beam, if we look at that grid pattern, you can see that those, those little squares are compressing because they're going through compression. The bottom side, we don't even look at the concrete. The tension side is all based on the steel and we call that T. So when it comes down to it, when we're designing this reinforced concrete beam, essentially a singly reinforced concrete beam, we've got to make sure our C, our compression, is equal to our tension. And to do that, we need to identify the forces, the amount of energy that's in our compression side and balance it with our tension side. And we do that by taking a representative stress block representing our concrete side. Funny enough, it was named after my wife, Whitney. That's not true. It is called the Whitney stress block, but it's a uh, representation of a physical phenomenon 
the, the stress coming from the compression side, it doesn't really look, look, look like this. This is a, a representation that we throw a factor of safety on. It really has this parabolic tear shape to it, and even that is still a representation, a model, if you will. And that's why we throw these correction factors on there. But that being said, we set that equal to our tension where we have a compression block here where we take into account the strength of the concrete, the, the depth to the neutral access, um, as well as some other factors to determine how big this representative block is and we backed it up with experiments and blah blah blah. The tension side is only a factor of the area of steel times the yield strength of steel. So when we take a second and not touch the board, but we break this compression zone down, it's going to be that representative Whitney stress block where we have this correction factor times the strength of our concrete and then the geometry of that compression zone. Now we set that equal to our tension zone area of steel times the yield strength. And by setting those equal, we can either design our concrete or we can determine how much load an existing beam can hold. So thanks for joining us today. We wanted to talk about reinforced concrete, go over one of the most basics, basic concepts when doing reinforced concrete design and analysis. We hope you had a good time. I know I did. Uh, let us know if you have any concrete questions, comments, or concerns. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, go concrete. Beat asphalt.